Swamiji says strongly here, you need to put into practice this teaching. First, you need to understand what you are doing wrong. Who is it that does that understanding? Buddhi. Next, you need to create new grooves for your mind so that your mind, manas, does not automatically flow in its old groove, in chitta, but instead begins to flow in the new grooves. They're also in chitta, but we have created there with the wisdom of buddhi. We, we're deciding what habit patterns we want. Learn to counsel yourself and have a self-dialogue. Learn to mentally talk to yourself. Sit down and have a dialogue with yourself. Ask yourself why you are doing an action. Many times you will say to yourself, I don't want to do this, but I have been doing it, and so now it's a routine. And then you'll understand the process of habit formation. With all your idealization of sadhana and gurus and teachers, you have neglected one thing. You need to know something practical. You need to know a practical method of gaining freedom from those weaknesses that you have formed in your childhood, which have become a part of your life and are difficult for you to resolve. Learn to work with yourself. All your actions are controlled by your thoughts, and all your thoughts are controlled by your emotions. By comparison with your emotion, thought has little power. But if you can use your emotional power constructively, you can channel it and attain ecstasy. Then emotions become creative. Your emotional power can be utilized in a creative way and can lead you to a height of oneness which will give you real happiness. Now we come to the issue of desire. Remember the comma, the prime desire. From where does desire arise and what is the nature of desire? He reminds us again, comma is the mother of every desire and it motivates you to do anything and everything. This is an important point. Kama is blind desire. It has no sense of discrimination, judgment, or understand you, or understanding. It means, by saying kama is blind desire, it doesn't mean that it should be anything other than blind. It means that kama is the root of all desire. If any sentence that begins with I want has desire, and it doesn't, if we, if we say, I want, fill in the blank. And you put a thousand different sentences that says, I want this, and I want this, and I want this, and I want this, and I want this. Every one of the items on that list has in common, comma, desire itself. And the desire itself is blind. It's not seen. It's comma itself. It's very important to understand that. It motivates you to do something simply to fulfill that desire because it exists. It's a surge that goes out that says, I want anything. Regardless of what it is, there's this surge that goes out that says, I want. I, ego, ahamkara, want. And those two act together. Why Swamiji called them the prime, prime desire, the two, or some form of what we were just looking at. He said there's two and most important or something like that of those streams of emotion. So anytime I say I want, I feel I want, I is there. There's a surge of, of me, of I. And there's a surge of want. And want is the common. This is useful to be aware. What if, just what if somehow you had mastery over want? What if somehow you had mastery over I? Now you have mastery over I and want. 
then we have a way to deal with every one of the what thousands, countless objects, things that we want. And most of our seems that most of our most of us use a way of dealing with these one at a time. I want this. I'm going to work on that issue or that problem or that desire. Later on, I'll work with that other desire, but I can't work with all of them at one time. The list is too big. I'm trying to be non-attached. So what am I attached to? And here's my, here's my long list. And I'll, and I'll check them off one at a time as I, as I deal with my want for this or my desire for that. What if we could deal directly with the want itself? with desire itself. If in a moment you could sort of erase that, just with your pencil eraser, just erase the desire, what if you could somehow exit out? Then instantly that long list of problems would sort of vanish. Because the want part, the desire part, would disappear. And the significance of this is let us understand that, that, that what we really want to deal with is desire itself. How to do that? Well, <laughs> he goes on. He, he kind of gets there. As we discussed, when karma is not fulfilled, you get angry and frustrated. That is crota, the emotion of anger. When you are angry, then you are completely blind. If you compare yourself to a dog, you will realize that even a dog never loses its temper in the way that you do. When you are frustrated, when your desires are not fulfilled, you can even hurt your child or your wife, whom you love very much. If this desire is fulfilled, then you become proud, and the fulfillment of the desire feeds your pride, which is an emotion called muda. Your mind thinks, I have achieved my desire. This is intoxicating, and when you are under the influence of this intoxication, you do not think clearly and you behave badly. If your desire is fulfilled, you compare yourself with others and think, I now have it and you don't have the object. I have it and I'm proud of it. This is mine because I have it. It's not yours. This is lobo or, or greed. And on it goes. This is the process, Swamiji said. You want to fulfill a desire. You have the desire, so naturally the desire will motivate you to fulfill it. The entire process of desires drives you crazy and creates your emotional problems. You want to fulfill the desire, and you're doing something to try to fulfill it. But in a few days' time, you will discover that your desire is still not fulfilled. So then you go on to another desire, and in this way you make your unconscious mind into a basement junkyard. You have been doing this kind of unconscious experiment with all your desires, but such experiments have already been done a long time ago by the great sages. You should follow their advice. The great sages taught that you can never attain anything truly great by fulfilling desires alone. You have to understand this point to make progress. Attain, attaining objects alone can never make you happy. The question is, how do we attain a state that is free of desire? It's not extremely easy, but neither is it impossible to attain a state that is free from desire. You are caught in a trap. The human being cannot live without performing actions, but when he performs the action, he then has to reap the fruits of the action. Give away the fruits is where we're headed. Sounds familiar? You should have desires. You do have desires, and you cannot live without having things. But you need to learn a way to be unaffected and live above this level even though you have desires. There is a way to accomplish this, and this is called the path of action or the path of karma. You can follow this path if you know how to perform your actions with the right mindfulness. You cannot live without performing actions. No human being can possibly do that. Your ancestors, the great sages, said to let all your actions become duties. 
And here this word duty is used in, in a positive sense. Actions become duties when you understand that you are really doing this action for another, for your wife or child or neighbor or country or for humanity. Actions becomes duties when you accept a responsibility to do them. Almost everybody in any kind of job that they're doing has somebody. There, there's, there's somebody in the environment around that you can say, I'm doing it for this person. Otherwise, we're just we're doing it to pay the bills. We're doing it only for money. 